Hello everyone and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. Today we are going to focus on building our own synthesizer sounds in Soundtrap. So here is a Soundtrap file and it's blank. All we're going to talk about is how the synthesizer works in Soundtrap and how you can control that to make the best sounding synth for your project. So the first thing you want to do if you want to build a synth is you can click add a track and hit synthesizer. Now that automatically brings up the flutter wave as your standard synthesizer. And this is what it sounds like. So there you go. That's the basic synthesizer sound. Now there are tons of presets that we can get by clicking and going in here. And you could always pick something that sounds close to what you want, but then what if you want to adjust it? Well, that's where this tweak button comes into play right here. So if you hit the tweak button, this screen pops up. So we're going to walk through in the next few videos what this screen actually means. And we're going to do it in several steps, but I want to explain it. First, this sound or this synthesizer has two different oscillators and the ability to mix between the two. So we're looking at this box, this box, and this slider. So if uh, this is off or not filled in gray, then you're only using one oscillator. Or conversely, if this slider is all the way up, you're only using one oscillator. And the oscillator is what actually creates the sound wave. Remember, a synthesizer is using an electrical component to create the oscillations to mimic sound waves and eventually, through a speaker, turn it into sound waves. So we have a few choices. We have five choices in here. We have a sawtooth wave. We have a triangle wave. We have a square wave. We have a sine wave and we have just plain noise. So here's the saw wave sound on this one. Triangle, square, sine, it's the most mellow by far, and then noise. And there are some other effects being added to this you can hear on, on the back end, but um, I would recommend that on oscillator one, you can kind of think of that as your primary oscillator. I would not recommend adjusting coarse and fine on your primary oscillator because each coarse adjustment is a half step adjustment. Well, let's go back to a saw wave. If you were going to make any adjustment, I would recommend doing it on 12, 24, or 36. That would be the octave points. Otherwise, the key that you hit on the piano is not going to be the key sound of the synthesizer. And then the fine adjustment is actually in synths, so you're raising and lowering the tuning of the note. So again, I would leave these both at top dead center on oscillator 1, which is a saw wave right now. So then on oscillator two, you have another source that you can blend in. So maybe we want to blend in some noise. Now we've got that noise blending in, but maybe we want to blend in a square wave. Now those two notes aren't in tune because the fine adjustment is low. So now I can bring them back together. And I have a sound wave that is the blending of a sawtooth wave and a square wave right now. This is more square. This is more sawtooth. I could give sine wave. It's a little finicky about right where you touch. Now, the cool thing I think about the course adjustment on oscillator 2 is you could actually create harmonies. So if I do this at plus 7, now I'm getting 
a harmony line. That's kind of cool. Or you could do an octave harmony at 12. Or you could get a sub octave. Or even two sub octaves and three sub octaves. So now you have that really cool low sustain. So, um, and you can give it a little more credence by moving the mix over to that way. So this is the oscillator and mix section of the uh, sound trap synthesizer. I hope that helps you understand what those three boxes do.